Uh, we are going to talk about the PD College and Institute of Ethics Committee members. Members, particularly violence and structure and function of the PC in Bangladesh. We actually, uh, this research has been done by a group of uh, researchers, including me. So this, uh, this, this is presented by me and Dr. Saiko. First, I'd like to uh, come here, Dr. Saiko, and present the first part. I will show the second part, that is the result part. Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, this is Dr. Mohan Saikulisna, working in the Department of Planning and Research, Director General of Health Services, and the Minister of Health and Family Law and And this is my privilege to be here. And a collaborative research activity was conducted under the Minister of Health and Family Law and and Bangladesh Bioethics Society, yeah. and on the one, prestigious medical university in our country, Bangalore Medical University, Professor Dr. Shakur, Bangladesh Biotech Society from Professor Shamima, and me, Professor Pisto. Thank you again. So, our study title was Knowledge and Attitude of Ethics Committee members regarding bioethics and structure and function of PC in Bangladesh private study. So, we would like to assess the knowledge and attitude of the Thank you, Ajay. So, we all are benefited from living in a society in where a serious scientific new medical research is carried out. The research is done to discover new investigations and treatment for disease. <coughs> this is higher than This is where uh, uncertainty exists. Therefore, each and every research protocol should be passed through the ethics committee in the country. Due to scandalous uh, unethical research practices of the mid and late 20th century, study protocol of biomedical research are reviewed by the ethics committee has become the accepted international standard. The declaration of Helsinki uniformly requires that all biomedical research involving human participants, including research on identifiable human material or data, should be approved by the Ethics Committee. Today, concerns over the quality of Ethics Committee functions are increasing worldwide. Clinical research has the potential risk of causing harm and therefore sound standard of PC must be established to protect research uh, participants. PC promotes a better understanding of ethical issues on biomedical research to safeguard the dignity, rights, safety and well-being of all potential research participants. Hence, it is essential for PC members to be aware of the common strategies to review research and clinical trials to exert their proper role and responsibility during their decisions. However, the information about the knowledge, attitude and practices of PC members regarding bioethics and structure and function of ethical committee is scale worldwide. So far we know no data is available from Bangladesh for this regard. Hence this pilot study was designed to assess the knowledge, attitude and of PC members on bioethics and structure and functions of PC in Bangladesh. Objectives. The general objective was to assess the knowledge, attitude, 
of EC members on biotics and structure and function of EC in Bangladesh. Specific objective was to assist the knowledge and attitude of EC members in biotics, to assist the knowledge of EC members on structure and function of the ETH committee. So in for this purpose, the methodology was uh, an analytical cross-section pilot study was conducted using a self administrator structure visionary connected on 50 EC members from 15 different institutes like universities, medical college and medical institute in Bangladesh over a period of six month duration February 2018 to June 2018. The sample site, study site was medical university, three, medical college six and other institute five and only one uh, National Research Council, BMRC Bangladesh Medical Research Council, there is a strong EC committee, uh, one institute. So these are the study sites that have been selected our sample from this institute. Among 50 participants, 40 members were technical and 10 <coughs> members were non-technical. Two questionnaires were discarded due to non-fulfillment of the questionnaires properly. This target question is well from non technical So, this is my part, and second part I would like to request Professor Sharma to discuss the next level. Thank you. Actually, there are many results. Uh, uh, there are 50 questionnaires, uh, questions uh, we asked. But uh, I am. I like to highlight some few questions. And you have seen that uh, the EC member in Bangladesh are well educated uh, and in respective subjects and biomedics because you are seeing the this picture. Uh, this picture, the most of the all are the postgraduate. Did we have had this postgraduate? Yet? And if you see this one. The um, almost half are the professor and followed by the associate professor and the assistant professor. Only one uh, 16 percent are the non technical. Then, uh, age of the uh, UC member were about 50 and uh, range from the 37 to 69, and the mean SD was uh, 52, 52 plus 5. And the question of the uh, knowledge of uh, how they gather knowledge of bioethics and all are uh, you have seen all uh, all all have the training on bioethics become becoming the EC member only two point uh, two percent uh, have uh, gathered knowledge on bioethics and been working with the uh, uh, EC EC <coughs> now the knowledge. Uh, at the question of the goal, uh, whether the goal of the research is to cure the disease rather than the uh, 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 not to gather the knowledge, um, here we see that the um, half of the respondent, almost half of the resp respondent, believe that the goal of the research is to cure disease and eliminate suffering of research subject, not gather the knowledge. Another question we are asked that uh, whether the verbal uh, consent is uh, relevant for the illiterate, illiterate person. And we are seeing here the result shows here that the half of the respondent felt the informed consent is okay for illiterate person. Uh, at the question of the whether mental patient has a no decision, uh, whether the mental patient has a decision uh, capacity. Here also we see, we have seen that the 50% respondent expressed a strong agreement that the mental patient has a no decision making capacity. Another question we ask that uh, uh, whether physician should respect patient refusal in certain treatment. And in this, uh, in this question, uh, uh, almost a, a half Half of the respondents believe that the physician should not respect the patient's refusal in certain question, certain treatment. 
Regarding the advanced directive, who we ask the whether advanced directive are helpful in dialogue among patient, family, and physician. In the, in this, we got the result that the almost two third two third believe that the advanced directive are not helpful in dialogue among patient and family and physician. So we are seeing here that the still Bangladeshi uh, uh, doctors and Bangladeshi EC members have the paternalistic attitude. Now the knowledge on the structure and function of the EC. Uh, the, uh, the EC are the male uh, predominant and only the one third are the women in the EC committee and the most of the members are technical you see. Uh, uh, two third are the technical, only the one uh, eighteen percent are non technical, and that means the four percent are the lawyer, four percent female representative, and six percent associate uh, scientist, and two percent only two percent religious person, and the no easy hat lay person. <coughs> Regarding the SOP, they, uh, oh, 60 percent say that their SOP are regularly updated, but uh, the 40 percent, uh, uh, some say no, and uh, some say don't know. So we give you cumulative result of the negative answer. The 40 percent uh, 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 cases of EC, uh, the SOP were not updated routinely. Uh, at the question of the whether their decision is a note down if disagreed by the majority. In here you see the 47, 47 a little more than half of the EC did not note down the decision if disagreed against majority of the vote in EC and placed in the minute in the next EC meeting. Um, uh, 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 another question we are asked today whether their EC is monitored by the authorized body. Actually, almost 60% um, uh, to uh, two thirds say that uh, the, their EC are not monitor, monitored by the authorized body to guide and oversee functioning of the EC. We ask the question the whether uh, there is a law to uh, quality control of uh, EC. Uh, most of them say that they don't know about the quality control. Is there any law in uh, for the quality control of the EC in Bangladesh? Uh, we ask another question: that there, is there any opportunity for the training of EC member? Almost all two thirds say that they know there is there was no uh, opportunity for training by the EC EC. We ask another question that uh, uh, their function are uh, uh, given by the honorarium. Uh, so in this question, most of them said they, they are, uh, their function is voluntary and they don't get any honorarium for their function during PC. And there is no budget, almost half said that there is most of half said that there is no budget for the PC. So, in conclusion, you can say though the most of the EC member had good understanding of biophysical dilemma, still EC member of Bangladesh have paternalistic attitude regarding some biological issue. And though only more than half of the EC member were aware about the structure and function of the EC, but still another half of the EC member were left behind. So we uh, recommend to government of Bangladesh uh, for uh, training for the EC member, monitoring the EC and establish a quality control of the EC and establish a central ethics committee. And uh, thank you for your patience. Okay. <coughs> thank you. The, <coughs> thank you for the sharing. Uh, sharing of. Professor Islam and uh, Professor Eska. <laughs> yeah. About the fun uh, <coughs> the function of ethic committee in Bangladesh. Uh, any question? <coughs> okay. Uh, I'd make just a comment and then ask a question. My comment is about the um, first and the rationale or the explanation you gave for the rise of ethics committees 
which was that there was there was scandalous, scandalous unethical practices. I think there's quite a lot of evidence that that easy explanation isn't completely valid. Um, there's no evidence that ethics that research was more unethical in the first half of the 20th century than at any other time. Rather, there was a change in the way in which certain practices were regarded rather than that practices were worse. So it's something to do with the way in which the community responded to ethical issues, particularly in that um, period after about 1960, or certainly after the, the Second World War. The question is about the idea of the centralised ethics committee. Um, I wonder if you would explain what your concept there is, particularly as you were state, taking quite a strong stand against paternalism. If there's a centralised ethics committee, I would assume that it would have some special authority in relation to other committees. Wouldn't you, on the contrary, be seeking to decentralise the system so that it became more democratic, not less? Yeah, actually, if in Bangladesh there is a, there is a national research ethics committee, but it is not by, run by the government. Government must have if government have a central uh, research ethics committee, I mean national bioethics committee, or like this. So they can uh, uh, monitor the other uh, research ethics committee. There are many research ethics committee, institutional research ethics committee in Bangladesh, but there is uh, no uh, outright, uh, monitoring actually how they are working. So if there is a central body, so that that monitor the uh, how how the ethics committee is running and how the uh, the structure of the ethics committee is valid or not. Some I have seen that the in some uh, respondents said that their ethics committee has uh, four members: one uh, chairman of the institute, head of the institute, another professor, another professor, and another professor. All are the technical person. So it is actually according to World Health Organization uh, description, uh, the, 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 this ethics committee is not actually composed uh, correctly. So uh, there is a rule regulation to uh, or, uh, uh, to uh, establish the ethics committee according to who. So we have to follow that. If we follow that rule, so uh, that will be better, and uh, it will minimize the um, uh, uh, it is minimize the uh, uh, their uh, in their decision making uh, making um, on a protocol. Uh, 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 so, so we need a central uh, research ethics committee, centralized. And uh, I have said the paternalistic attitude. That means still they think that they are the do, what they are doing that is good for the patient, because most are the technical. That means the professor, doctor, doctor. So they think they think that they are what. They doing for the patients that is good for the patient, but the patient have autonomy. They, they don't uh, uh, take consideration of that. The uh, patient can uh, refuse the treatment. They can. They don't. That, that, that means uh, doctors. Uh, they are not. Uh, they don't consider the refusal of the treatment if there is. So these this these are the paternalistic attitude. Uh, they have to be if there is a more training, so they will understand what is bioethics and how they should they should go. So uh, they will be less paternalistic. They will honor the patient's rights. Thank you. Uh, if I can add on that, I'm Professor Dr. Taslima Mansur from Bangladesh. Uh, I think you know what Professor Shami Malashkar is saying is accountability. Uh, so we need the ethics committee to have some accountability uh, to another body, a national body, 
which will be you know accountable to all the research ethics committees. So uh, that would be uh, much more according to the World Health Organization and all this. Uh, and, the, and about the law, uh, you were mentioning about the law in the survey. Actually, there is no law in Bangladesh still on how uh, the ethics committee, the conduct of the ethics committee, will be conducted, or you know how if they do something wrong or uh, you know malpractice or anything, is there anybody who will be you know taking them to the courts? Uh, so there is no enforceability. So this is what I think the study came up to that we need some accountability, transparency, and enforceability in Bangladesh. Thank you. Actually, this this uh, research is done by the uh, uh, funded by the uh, Ministry of Health, Bangladesh. So we from this. Uh, from this research, we saved some money, and uh, we want to hand it over this money to uh, our president, President uh, Tasima Mansur, uh, to uh, to organize the next ABC uh, in Bangladesh. Can I uh, hand it over? Check. <coughs> Can I go? Yeah, yeah. I would like to ask, uh, request uh, Dr. Professor Shakur to come here. And also be Dr. Shakila. Yeah. Uh, one minute, I just wanted to say this is a very good gesture. And I think, you know, if others follow this, this is very nice for Bangladesh because you know that uh, we are not rich of uh, riches. So. Uh, we we hope that this will be a very good endeavor. Thank you.